Day 267. Song of Solomon 4-5. How beautiful you are, my darling, how very beautiful. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn sheep coming up from the washing, each has its twin, and not one of them is lost. Your lips are like a scarlet ribbon, and your mouth is lovely. Your brow behind your veil is like a slice of pomegranate. Your neck is like the Tower of David, built with rows of stones, on it hang a thousand shields, all of them shields of warriors. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle grazing among the lilies. Before the day breaks and the shadows flee, I will make my way to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. You are altogether beautiful, my darling, in you there is no flaw. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride, come with me from Lebanon. Descend from the peak of Amana, from the summits of Sinir and Hermon, from the dens of the lions, from the mountains of the leopards. You have captured my heart, my sister, my bride, you have stolen my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your neck. How delightful is your love, my sister, my bride. Your love is much better than wine, and the fragrance of your perfume than all spices. Your lips, my bride, drip sweetness like the honeycomb, honey and milk are under your tongue, and the fragrance of your garments is like the aroma of Lebanon. My sister, my bride, you are a garden locked up, a spring enclosed, a fountain sealed. Your branches are an orchard of pomegranates with the choicest of fruits, with henna and nard, with nard and saffron, with calamus and cinnamon, with every kind of frankincense tree, with myrrh and aloes, with all the finest spices. You are a garden spring, a well of fresh water flowing down from Lebanon. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind. Breathe on my garden and spread the fragrance of its spices. Let my beloved come into his garden and taste its choicest fruits. I have come to my garden, my sister, my bride, I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, and drink, drink freely, O beloved. I sleep, but my heart is awake. A sound. My beloved is knocking, open to me, my sister, my darling, my dove, my flawless one. My head is drenched with dew, my hair with the dampness of the night. I have taken off my robe, must I put it back on? I have washed my feet, must I soil them again? My beloved put his hand to the latch, my heart pounded for him. I rose up to open for my beloved. My hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with flowing myrrh on the handles of the bolt. I opened for my beloved, but he had turned and gone. My heart sank at his departure. I sought him, but did not find him. I called, but he did not answer. I encountered the watchmen on their rounds of the city. They beat me and bruised me, they took away my cloak, those guardians of the walls. O daughters of Jerusalem, I adjure you, if you find my beloved, tell him I am sick with love. How is your beloved better than others, O most beautiful among women? How is your beloved better than another, that you charge us so? My beloved is dazzling and ruddy, outstanding among ten thousand. His head is purest gold, his hair is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside the streams of water, bathed in milk and mounted like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice, towers of perfume. His lips are like lilies, dripping with flowing myrrh. His arms are rods of gold set with beryl. His body is an ivory panel bedecked with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble set on bases of pure gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, as majestic as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Galatians 3. O foolish Galatians! Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you, did you receive the Spirit by works of the law, or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish? After starting in the Spirit, are you now finishing in the flesh? Have you suffered so much for nothing, if it really was for nothing? Does God lavish His Spirit on you and work miracles among you because you practice the law, or because you hear and believe? So also, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand, then, that those who have faith are sons of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, and foretold the gospel to Abraham, 
all nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law, because, the righteous will live by faith. The law, however, is not based on faith, on the contrary. The man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing promised to Abraham would come to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Brothers, let me put this in human terms. Even a human covenant, once it is ratified, cannot be cancelled or amended. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many, but and to your seed, meaning one, who is Christ. What I mean is this, the law that came 430 years later does not revoke the covenant previously established by God, so as to nullify the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on a promise, but God freely granted it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given? It was added because of transgressions, until the arrival of the seed to whom the promise referred. It was administered through angels by a mediator. A mediator is unnecessary, however, for only one party, but God is one. Is the law, then, opposed to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come from the law. But the scripture pronounces all things confined by sin, so that by faith in Jesus Christ the promise might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law became our guardian to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise.